So this is May. This is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I have uh, a person who I've just recently met online who is a holistic coach. Her name is Kate. And we want to pick her brain and, and find out how she sees mental health, even how she sees the coach, coaching industry. Um, I'm pretty sure she'll tell you how she got into being an holistic coach. So welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. I'm introducing to you guys today the wonderful, the marvelous Kate. Kate, who are you, Kate? Thank you so much, Drew. It's so nice to be here. I really appreciate the invite. Um, yeah, my name is Kate Macri, and I'm a holistic life coach and certified meditation teacher. So I really help people really rediscovering themselves and mm. I'm big on cultivating holistic wellness and self-care and creating a, a lifestyle that is holistic. And of course, I'll get more into what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. But um, I really guide my clients on a journey of self-discovery where they're aligning their mind and body and soul so that they really feel like they're their true selves and um, so that they can unlock like who they really are. and and create a life of fulfillment and, and purpose and like really prioritizing their self so they they love their life. I love it. I love it. Now you said something that um, I definitely want to pick apart, rediscovering themselves. What do you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is very much what I went through as I became a coach myself. Um, I saw a coach myself back in 2018 because I was feeling really lost. Like I felt like I had done all the right things I that society t tells you to do go to college get a job and buy the house and I didn't feel like really fulfilled and so I had to go through a whole journey of like who actually am I and what do I want and figure out like what things was I going after that kind of I felt like society told me I wanted to do mm -hmm. versus like really figuring out who I was and figure out my path on my own and what my biggest priorities and values were so I could live a life that really aligned with that. What, what do you think because you said something that hit it um hit the like the, the hammer the hammer the nail yeah. what do you think society like preaches to us that we end up chasing that's not supposed to be chased after i think it's really like the way that you're perceived you have to look a certain way mm -hmm. and have the steady nine to five job with the health insurance have the home with the family and the mm -hmm. fence and the dog and that's wonderful and of course some of those things are things i still like wanted and desired but it wasn't just that simple you know mm -hmm. so how how did you how did kate come to this point where we both know by now most people will feel the same way and then just ignore the feeling or they'll just pretend um that one day the feeling will magically leave how did you come to a place where you stopped and was like either i need a coach to to help me or i need to make a decision how did you how did you arrive at that point of making that decision yeah i feel like i had just like this moment of like i'm so done like i had gotten to the point where it was so uncomfortable where i was that like mm -hmm. making a change was the only option i had at that point like i put it off for so long and i knew i was just living like this complacent life and i wasn't happy um, so I made the decision to see a holistic life coach. I didn't even know what that meant or mm -hmm. who she was at the time, but I actually considered going to therapy, which I had done many times before in my life. And I found this coach and I was like, wait, this seems like different. And I really want help, like really creating something new in my life. Now, what's, what would you say the difference is for the audience of a holistic coach versus a therapist? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some similarities um, in terms of like as a holistic life coach, I really do dive deep into someone's past and understanding what creates like the thoughts that they have currently, what beliefs they have, like that all really comes from our subconscious mind. And when we're young, we really develop these core beliefs and memories. Um, so I do that as a coach and I do believe that's part of therapy. Um, however, with coaching, I really focus on like setting goals, setting identity-based goals and helping them create actionable steps to reach that. Whereas therapy, I feel like, at least in my experience, I did a lot more like talk therapy. So I did a lot of just really having someone there to talk to and to help guide me through my feelings and kind of 
work through emotions. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I'm doing a little bit, I'm doing some of that, but also really teaching about, you know, taking care of your body, taking care of your mind and, and chasing those goals and really creating more in their life. I love it. Now, give us an example of you said um, you teach them how to or you ask them identity based questions or you give them identity based questions. What does that mean? So I really like to see goals as like creating an identity. Like it's yeah. really about how you feel and who you want to be mm. versus like reaching a certain milestone. Um, so one of the examples that I use a lot is like if you're someone who's looking to lose weight, that's great. And that's but that's more of like a milestone, because if that's your only focus, you're going to have a hard time wrapping your mind around everything yeah. else that comes with that. Yeah. So it's more about like creating the identity of someone who lives a healthy lifestyle. And when you can really accept the identity that you're trying to create, it's a lot easier to start to take actions and be like, yeah, this is me. I am someone who makes healthier decisions and lives a healthy lifestyle. So if you guys, if you guys who are listening to this, I'm enjoying it already. But <laughs> if you guys haven't just, if you haven't noticed that most of our world will never create identity based goals. It's always check, check it off, get to the metric. And you realize it's that much harder if you don't become that person. A, because yeah. you, you cannot probably keep being someone you're not. And that's where like imposter syndrome is just coming in every single moment, every single day. Now, Kate, who, who were you before you became uh, a holistic life coach? I, were you a fitness trainer before? No, I wasn't. Okay. Um, I was actually in marketing. I worked at a corporate nice. marketing agency. Yeah, I did that for um, seven years Okay. after college. So yeah, I was just, that was my job. I was working a nine to five in an office, like commuting back and forth an hour a day and um, sitting in a cubicle. And I knew I didn't love it, but... <laughs> I also just really considered myself like a really stressed out person and I just felt like my life was lived for that job. Like I barely spent time at my house and mm. I was kind of running on autopilot, um, wake up, go to go to work, come home, get ready for the next day and, and on repeat until I was kind of living for the weekends to go out with friends and whatnot. I, I love that because the well, shame was plugged. Kate has a podcast. You guys got to go follow that. But if you ever see Kate's videos, I was like, she has to know something about marketing because the videos mm -hmm. are really, really clean. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> they're really, really, they're really, really good. And they're enough to get you to actually listen to the actual episode. So I was like, she knows about marketing or, or something. Um, With that, the whole cubicle life, uh, driving like that, doing a job you don't particularly love. How do you think that affects someone's mental health? Yeah, I really see that as like the sole component of mm. like our holistic health, holistic health, excuse me, um, because like you have to love what you're doing and like you're the majority of your time is literally spent working and at your job. So if you're just absolutely dreading it every day and don't feel any sort of passion or fulfillment and like you're not really living from your heart. Mm. And like, I don't feel like you're really being your true self if you don't spend your time doing things that you love. So it really definitely affects like your overall well being and, and mental state when your whole day every day is not enjoyable. Yeah. Um, Gary V, I'm pretty sure you probably heard of Gary V. Yeah. Uh, people can love him or hate him. I, I love him <laughs> for a lot of reasons outside of just him being a marketer, but just how he sees sometimes other things in life. And he said to someone, you think uh, work-life balance is working nine to five and then going home, but you hate 40 hours of your week. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. He, wow. You don't think of it. I think of it like that. What would be something you, you tell someone if they're like, Hey, I hate my nine to five. I got to take this commute. I got to, being a cubicle, but this is how I support my family. How do you coach someone through that? Yeah, well, first I really like say it's important to create a, a current like life where you are able to accept where you are and 
love your job where you are, even if you want a new one, like as much as you can, like you can't go every day into it with like this horrible mentality, mm -hmm. but you can always change that. Like you don't have to leave your job and just be not receiving a paycheck and, and be worried about how you're paying your bills. But anybody anywhere can find a new job, like look for something different and don't be afraid to change course completely. Yeah. I, I know many people who have in their mid thirties and their forties even changed That's their careers too. Yeah. So it might be scary of course, but it's scarier to stay where you are and just live life with regrets and look back and be like, wow, I really didn't like how I spent my time. Mm. So I would encourage people to really dive deep into like what will make them happy in their work and go after that make connections with people do do what you can because there's always opportunity out there i love it now how did you how did you get to a point where you obviously made that choice you're doing something totally different uh which is remarkable how did you get to the point where you're like i'm gonna do a podcast <laughs> Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do since like starting my coaching business. So I started in 2020. Pandemic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was an interesting time. Interesting. But um, yeah, I, I just knew I wanted to do a podcast. I had it written down in like 2021 mm -hmm. and it was something I kept going back to. And so finally in 2023, halfway through, I like really finally started it. And what, what was that? What was that like for starting it? It was really exciting and it was also a lot to learn. Um, mm -hmm. I know you help coach people on starting a podcast, right? You just started yeah. doing that. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of tools and a lot of setup, a lot of equipment we got and we wanted to get like good stuff um, because, you know, we do record the videos and post those on YouTube as well. Um, so it's a lot of learning mm -hmm. and a lot of like tools and knowing how to edit and whatnot, but we also use some AI tools to help with that. Absolutely, so, why, not? <laughs> why not? It makes it so much easier. Yeah. It saves lots of time. Um, so yeah, it it just we kind of just went with it, and we were like, hey, if it's not perfect, we'll learn as we go. I like that. That so that that whole model similar to what um, just me coaching people. Period. I always say like, you can start not perfect. Because right. it's yeah. never going to be perfect. Because someone can be like, oh, that that one color shouldn't be there or it could be anything. But the whole goal of just start, you can get better as you go. You can learn mm -hmm. as you go with with being a holistic coach. Have you found that marketing has come into place at all for you? I'm definitely having to lean on my knowledge of marketing um, for marketing myself. Mm -hmm. I, I worked in marketing as a project manager, so I wasn't deep into like the strategy side. So I still struggle with that a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but it definitely helps in terms of just knowing like how to keep my branding consistent and, um, you know, the importance of having my website and making sure like my journey for potential clients makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you find now with being being on your own as a coach? you have to put yourself out there of some sort right so if, for everyone who feels that you can you have you can have a business and you cannot promote of some sort promoting is only bad when people don't want it and when you're doing it from an ill intent do you find that that uh messes with people's mental health or or yours like putting yourself out there yeah it's hard to like especially if you're not someone who's used to like showing on showing your face on social media like i'm a very introverted person um which i've had people say to me like you are like because they see me showing up online um but i really try to just like take a step back and remind myself every time like i have something that helps people like mm -hmm. that is my mission and my goal so ultimately if i'm embarrassed on the camera like just just press post and it's fine. Like <laughs> just yeah. put yourself out there or else people can't find you and you can't help those people. So my mission is really bigger than, you know, worrying about showing up. How, how did Kate come up with this, this, this mindset of, I, I coach people, I've coached people with fitness and I've coached people with the content. And one of the main things when people want to actually become coaches or become an entrepreneur is I'm really camera shy 
Mm-hmm. I'm an introvert myself. Like if I could, I would literally be in a like in a library all day, <laughs> like just with a notepad reading. Um, but people come and they're like, "I'm camera shy. I I can't do videos. I can't do these things." What do you say to someone who has a mental block like that? Because it's not like someone's born being like, "I'm born to be on camera. Let me just get yeah. after it." What do you say to someone uh, about that? I would really invite them to understand where the I can't is coming from Mm -hmm. because that's like a deep rooted belief. So Mm -hmm. sometimes you really have to go back and understand, well, why do you why do you think you can't? Because you absolutely can. And that's a mentality you have to like grow into and adopt. It's not going to be comfortable at first. Like, no, it's definitely going to be weird. And so I've definitely made better videos now than I did four years ago I feel like I was like a robot on the screen but you can't get any better without starting and putting yourself out there even when it's uncomfortable at first so you know maybe even start taking videos without posting them and just keep practicing and then you know if you need to like get another eye on them send them to your friend and like they'll probably tell you like it's great post it like just just put yourself out there (laughs) it's it's true do you do you feel as being a holistic holistic coach as a woman do you feel that men struggle with mental health differently than women absolutely absolutely um you know i think that men have a harder time talking about it and like Mm -hmm. admitting it and opening up and being like really vulnerable about what they're going through because you know they're often taught like to be strong and and don't show emotion Mm -hmm. um so yeah i definitely think that's a big thing that we're still you know struggling with today as a society and and supporting men and helping them know that it's okay to be struggling and to talk about it and get help now do you do you um would you accept male clients yeah absolutely okay and what would you what would be something you do to get them to open up we are as being a man we always we always hear um you know open up be vulnerable people throw their word around safe space mm-hmm. and i think men see it differently for for different reasons but we definitely need the help how would you approach or how do you approach male clients yeah i think it's really about you know i know you said the word safe space but like it has to be comfortable in that they are comfortable with you just as a human being as a person Mm -hmm. so it you know you're not going to dive deep immediately necessarily but it's asking the right questions and starting to understand their past and where their beliefs come from and what's maybe stored in their subconscious mind that's really creating the life that they have today and and those harsh beliefs that they're struggling with or the negativity that they're maybe dwelling in and and just telling them like it's totally normal like we all go towards negativity on a normal basis like Mm -hmm. all of us you know i still find myself there sometimes even though i'm a holistic coach and i'm helping people through these things but you have to like really trust in who you're working with Um, So find someone that you resonate with, that you really believe in what they're teaching first. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if it's a therapist, if it's a coach and as a coach, like I really try to just get to know my clients and make them comfortable with me first. And the longer I work with them, like the more comfortable they get and they will share more and I'll ask all the right questions to get them to actually talk about things. I love it. I I love what you said find out what's stored in their subconscious mind that's that's where all the battle yeah is is happening we call it um i call it an underlining issue like when people feel like men don't open up like like you said they've been told to just be strong mm-hmm. when in actuality being able to open up is being strong um yeah. versus don't say anything just just take it on the chin just as much as i love david goggins just be david goggins and just <laughs> grind it out with with that being said do you feel in 2024 going forward do you feel that people are going to actually be better mentally i do think so and i hope so i mean that's part of you know my mission and i know there's a lot of coaches out there doing the same and um therapists and social workers and everything and i think that there's 
been more of a shift towards like, no, vulnerable is not weak. So it's really getting mm -hmm. that message out there and telling people it's it's weak if you're not saying something and you're just drowning and letting yourself go through such hard times without getting help. It's stronger to like push through it and work through those difficult times, those diff difficult negative emotions that you're having. Um, that's hard too. That is mm -hmm. hard work. It's hard, but what makes people, or what do you think makes people say, hey, I'm going to choose this hard versus just staying where I'm at? I think it's really seeing like your future and knowing that there is something better. Like you don't have to be stuck there. And it's making that decision. I think that seeing other people who have gone through it before you, who can tell you like, hey, I've been there and it, it can and does get better. But you really have to like commit to the work. You can get support and you can get help. But ultimately, you are the one that's in charge of making those decisions and mm -hmm. taking those actions every day to better yourself. I, I love it. So here's a, here's a confession. So I've talked to holistic coaches before um, and they need they need Kate in their life because <laughs> um, they feel they're in charge of the person's outcome. Mm. And it's like you you can guide them, you can lead them, you can give them any any type of exercise and things like that. But if they have to actually be committed to doing some work or else they're going to be the same exact uh, person. Have you have you ever had a client who you just felt like they weren't going to do the work? I have, unfortunately, <laughs> and it just it didn't really work out. And, you know, when they kind of said to me towards the end of like our coaching, like I didn't really feel like I got where I wanted to, you know, I had to like be honest with them and be like, well, did you do X, Y and Z that we discussed? And, and they admitted, no, they didn't. They didn't put in the energy. They didn't take the actions. They didn't make the changes. And so. I did have that experience and I'm more careful now moving forward as far as like, I need to make sure that the clients that I'm working with are ready to take action mm -hmm. and know that I'm here to support them. I'm their accountability. I'm going to really guide them, um, but I can't do it for them. That that's, that's what it is. So we have some, some last questions. These questions are totally nothing to do with holistic coaching. So. <laughs> no they're just good random questions that uh, people get to hear and learn from you so kate sure what's your favorite movie oh man that's such a hard one i'm not a huge movie person okay okay um but oh man i'm thinking of a movie that i can't remember the name of that i've always always loved maybe you can remind me the name yeah. if you've seen it um it's it's about like this woman who marries this like Irish man that she means in Ireland and he's played by um that popular actor. Why can't I think of his <laughs> name? Okay. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um I'm gonna have to let you know what it was. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> what's what's Kate's favorite dish? I am huge on like steak and like steak and potatoes. It's like my favorite there meal. There you go. There you go. <laughs> What about favorite book? Oh, man. Um, there's this book I read called You Are Enough by Caroline. I might butcher his name. No, it's uh, Panache Dese. Hmm. It's such a good book. Huh. There's, oh, okay. So this book is called um, There's Nothing Wrong With You. Okay. I think her name was Sherry Huber. I, I thought that was the same book. What's if Kate could have a perfect day like no limit you designed it this is going to be like the perfect day what would that day look like oh man yeah um i would definitely start my day with the getting outside hopefully it's beautiful and sunny mm -hmm. and warm i'm such a warm weather person yeah <laughs> yeah um would love to just get outside like first thing with my dogs and fiance like going on a nice walk or a hike or something i'm just such an outdoor like nature person and anytime i start my day with being in the sun and movement i automatically feel better yeah yeah <laughs> what um, else will happen in that day yeah um definitely you know taking time to work with clients or working on my business whatever that looks like um 
spending time cooking i'm always cooking like ah. all pretty much all of our meals like i'm a big big into cooking at home so definitely would get that in there cooking breakfast lunch dinner um you know spending just time in the yard with the dogs like i again i'm just such an outdoor person i love um, it i would love to you know have time in the evening to maybe go on another walk and get outside again like i'm a simple person i'm definitely like introverted so being at my home is where i'm comfortable uh, making sure i'm getting exercise and movement and getting outside having time working with my clients and spending time with my family like that's really what makes me super fulfilled i love it i love it favorite if you do eat it favorite ice cream flavor <laughs> i do eat ice cream still but i've had to go more like dairy free yeah um but like cookies and cream Oreo, yeah <laughs> yeah that's my jam <laughs> similar 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 if you were to have any guest in the world that are alive on your podcast show who would it be mm. probably dr joe dispenza mm. have you heard of him yeah 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 tell us why He's just incredible. I mean, I've learned so much about like just so much of what I do from him and the like brain and heart coherence that he always talks about and how important like having a gratitude practice is and really like intentionally putting yourself into this state of gratitude and and having like being in a frequency of good and positive and how much of an impact that can have on everything else in your life and on your day so i just i would love to interview him mm, you should just reach out to him <laughs> never know <laughs> right i'll give it like, a shot yeah. hey I, I think we should link up i really love what you do you never know right yeah. never know i think if i had a chance to have a person on the podcast that are alive a couple uh one would be he's not alive right now uh jim Rohn would be one Okay. Uh, my second would be Myron Golden, and my third, honestly, would be um. My third would uh, it's it sounds weird and it sounds cliche, but my my third would be Bruce Lee. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> I don't think he would do a podcast, but I mean, who who knows? So, <laughs> Kate, as as we as we come to an end, if you had to give our world, um this audience any final words what would it be i think it would be to you have to prioritize yourself and mm -hmm. and whatever way that means like to you that's not selfish because when you are showing up for yourself and you're taking care of your your mental health your just your physical health and you're able to put yourself in a position where you're doing your best, it's gonna show up in everything else in your life, mm -hmm. in your career, in with your family. Like you have to show up for yourself first in order to create a better life around you with everything else. I love that, I love that. Kate, how could people find you if they wanted to follow you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Um, my name is at Kate Macri, M-A-C-R-I with an underscore at the end because someone had my name. Oh, um, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and then I have a website, um, newmoonholisticlife.com. That's actually my business name. Nice, nice. Yeah. Kate, I, I got a lot of nuggets out of that. Two things I'm I, I'm going to write down as soon as I get off is um, yeah. how you worded it, identity-based goals. Mm -hmm. I love that we I we always say um me and some friends who I talk to you know become the goal yeah, yeah. or become the person that is is that is that goal and mm -hmm. the second part was you know realizing that there's things stored in your subconscious mind that's making you act or be the way you are so Kate I I thoroughly enjoyed it I want to tell you guys that as we shot this whenever you hear it, it's probably not going to be the same exact time that we shot it um, we shot it at 6 a.m. So Kate is a warrior. I'm a really early riser. Yeah. And this is usually a quiet time where my little one is asleep. So that's why I do them so so it. so early. So Kate, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure we'll be in touch and we'll make sure people go and follow you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great conversation. I love oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime, anytime. Remember, go ask that guy. Go ask Joe to be I in the podcast. <laughs> Take care, Kate. Thank you, you too.